I'm Trevor Astro. I'm right here in Pittsburgh. My brother Mike usually does the speaking. I'm actually the ice carver. My brother Mike runs the business. We've been carving ice since 1984. And I've learned a lot from most everybody in this room and a lot of members of this association. It's a privilege to speak for you. And uh, I brought some handouts. I only had 15 of them. And basically what I printed out were simple tips on where to start when you've got to approach a block of ice, how to cut it. I'm not going to spend much time today talking about it. If you want to go outside where I car, I will uh, try to talk out there a little more. If not, we could probably just pull some chairs out there and watch the wind on the outside. What I'm going to do today is I'm sure you're all seeing traditional ice sculpture and how any type of profane piece in that nowadays are so complex. Anything you see on the internet is mind blowing. When I started, just like many of the guys here at Blades, we just started with a six prong shaver, and then we got chainsaws and a lot of chisels, carpenter chisels to specialized Japanese chisels. I still prefer using the chisels. A lot of carvers today prefer using a die grinder, it's a large, powerful Dremel tool. There's a lot of tips available for those. In our studio, we probably have 12 tips on 12 different die grinders already to work. Uh, my guy, Dan Schaefer, he does most of the sculpting nowadays. With the help of our newest employee five years ago, we put on a CNC, which is a computer numeric control router. We programmed that in the office. With that, you'll see out there, when I used to use a template, and I'll go back to the template in a moment, we would draw out on a piece of paper, or I would just draw out an image right on a block of ice. And now we program that into the computer. The router will rough cut with a half inch tip, a silhouette of a three dimensional face sculpture. But there's some really neat stuff that people are doing today with logos. And what that's doing is sculpting the most intricate logos that you can, it's almost nothing that can't be carved in ice anymore. So I brought a relatively simple one today and I even brought some color sand with us. We're going to lay it down and just do a little bit of it simple just to show you how that's done. You've probably seen it already, or you will be seeing a lot of it. A lot of these logos are colored. We're using color sand, some guys use a gelatin. We sculpt everything in a freezer now. For many years, I carved everything at room temperature, but we find now everything at 15 to 20 degrees. It's a tough environment. It takes a lot to get used to it. But for about seven or eight years now, we've had a studio where we sculpt in that freezer just for carving ice. But the ice stays so consistent, it's so uniform, unique, and clear, it's, it's just mind blowing. Where ice has gone from the 50s to where we are now in 2000, 2017, it's really neat. I'm still excited about it. As long as I've been sculpting ice, it's amazing the neat stuff we do every day with it. A lot of you have seen the quality we do. Most all the time, it's Really, really good. Sometimes you make a mistake. The worst mistake you make now is rushing through and spelling something wrong in our computer that doesn't work. We just can't make any other excuse. We get it. And, uh, oh, myself as an artist, I'm not, I was never a great student, so I'm not a good speller. Luckily, my brother Mike is a uh, computer savvy, college graduate. So <coughs> him and our other ice carver, Dan, are really good at programming. Designs. This, I made a snowman on the CNC, so we'll program that in the software in the office, send the signals back to the carving studio, which is probably 200 feet away from the office. That information goes into a controller, and what we do is use Corel Draw for the artistic side of it, and then we use a, a Millwright, it's called software, that tells the computer to uh, how fast the router's going to spin, how deep it's going in, and it's neat. It's, it's just an axis, a three axis. The router goes left, right, up and down, in and out. It makes perfect circles. It's just really, really neat. So I brought one logo. It's kind of a simplified uh, ACF logo with some stars and a flag on it. Just so I can uh, show you how to backfill that with sand. A lot of them will do backwards. Uh, in here, I, this little packet I made, 
There's a lot of things we've done. Some of them are just snow. Some, I don't think I've any colors. I'll just throw one each day for now. But uh, it's real exciting, all the neat stuff that's being done. As I used to always say, I can train anybody to use Now we start out with, just like arts and crafts, I can show you how to make a basket, make a swan. Now these things aren't very difficult. Why don't you just take this? Why don't you just take this? Why don't you just take this? Okay. Making a template, I still want to take this out. Making a template is simple. What we use to start sculpting was big scroll an image on a sheet of paper, 20 inches by 40 inches, that's a block of ice. And then from there, we would take that sheet of paper and place it against the block of ice, taking the ice pick and just punch through it, and we'd have a silhouette of a sculpture. Now we save a little time to do that with the computer. That way we could be sculpting on the CNC starting to yield something else. We have it to where it used to take 15 minutes and we just have a silhouette of sculpture. But as we're getting to understand the software for the last five years or six years, we've had the We're able to program it to cut the ice in different depths. So once we knock away the outside edge, it's not being used. We probably have that piece close to halfway done. It still has to be cut by hand. I don't take anything just from the meal and send it off. And there's ice carving for saying we can carve a piece in 20 minutes. I can carve a piece in 15 minutes. But believe me, it'll look like it took 15 minutes. It'll look like crap. You know, you really gotta take crap. Just like you know in the kitchen. The faster you do something, the less ingredients are, it's just not going to be the right quality. So everything we do. You know, I used to do a sculpture in about two hours. Now with the meal, and my guy Dan, he's such a perfectionist, it might take four hours to do a lot of sculptures. You can really lose the time. And if it's not right, he usually pushes it aside and starts another one. Now that's somewhat frustrating because a lot of times we get a really healthy muscle. I guess it's six days away from the sculpting night. And we have a high demand from Thanksgiving to after New Year's. We don't have time to make this stuff over here. The end of the when he gets the thing right. And I'm not grateful for that because the guy won't send out a crappy piece of sculpture to us customers. It's the kind of quality that our customers expect like I said I have some extras here. There's a couple of pamphlets in here. I'm not showing off or bragging my work. <laughs> you can just see the quality. It's really neat. Nice. And that's just saying that the whole industry has changed. You know, sculpting me on the internet, it's really neat to see the stuff that other people are doing around the country. And anything there that we keep up with. So if we see something new, someone sends us a photo and says, I'd like to have this done, we can do it. We can actually reproduce any sculpture. By hand, I can sculpt like a road dead sculpture, the, the finger of the man or woman who the kiss. That was always my special. I love the, you know, that's all by hand. The computer really can't do that. You know, the computer, the CNC is like a main robot, the way it sculpts ice. Those types of hand sculpted pieces, it looks like a real artist did. You still got to do by hand. But I don't get much help with this anymore. But, uh, it's possible to do work. Like the, uh, I would say, the images on a dollar bill with the evil, that could be reproduced exactly the dollar. So we can cut that. A lot of times we'll cut it backwards. So when you look at the image straight on, it looks like it's reversed. So we can go in and fill that with sand or uh, it's just snow and white. Then we can turn it around. The image looks like it's inside the ice before it's on the back. And then we back to that as well. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions. So, is there anyone who would be interested in trying some ice carving today? I did bring extra tools if someone had a chance on it. I brought a snowman. I'm not going to spend much time on that. Old chef probably can hang on to that one put it in the freezer. Kids make it for the I just had a quick question. Yes. Uh, utilizing the CNC, how does that affect your pricing? Um, does it lower it? It doesn't change the price. It doesn't change it. Nah. Because when I, when I used to sculpt everything by hand, so I said it'd take me two to three hours. Now we're placing maybe an extra hour and a half on there. Uh -huh. But the quality is exact. I sent the sculpture this week. 
call me next year or a month from now, it's going to be the exact same small thing. But we start with the same basic design for sure. Right? Whether it's Dan or myself, or have two part time guys that work for this also. It's always going to be the same because they can uh, keep the part very consistent, the designs consistent. And the CNC, I can even take the design and then change it a little bit more. Right? I don't know if a snowman has the room on the left hand, I'm going to have to put a rake on the right hand. Yeah. It's just as a simple explanation. Do, do you have a problem supplementing talent? I mean, how do you rehire yes. your employees here for a long time? Well, everybody wants the ice plant. We, we also manufacture ice cubes. We make a hundred tons of ice cubes. And when we started doing just maybe a couple of thousand pounds. And then we went 25 tons, and then 50 tons. I would make we ought to make that over this. By actually by trade, I'm on refrigeration room. I was probably one of the only guys that wasn't a chef at Salt Lake. But I was always an artist. So in the guys business I see chefs, many all members of the association. I started to really get interested in visiting ice the room. And that's how I developed in the ice garden. The first guy to see was Richard Shane. Mark Richards worked for Sexton, Vincent's office to be the sous chef down at the Royal Penn. Those were the first ice cards. I see Marsha Bailey to be a Phoenix event. Just off the top of my head, back from the early days, the first couple of guys I've seen in the ice cards. Richard's been carving ice since 1959, <laughs> 1958. <laughs> it's neat to see, you know, I like old books of ice cards, but then you are. You know, the most simplest sculptures are really neat to me, because that's where my industry came from. It's basic beginnings, just like the kitchen. The things that advance so much today, really, so fast. It's just really fun. So, so was that, that an industry standard that you carved the ice into the freezer? Yes. What? Most guys are not most of it. It's, it's cool because when you start carving in the freezer, and then when, once you make your cut in the shape, it stays just like that. And sure. You, yeah. and, and then once you learn these different techniques, you don't, well, we used to rely on making a rough sculpture and then heating it up or hosing it off, and then having to smooth it off. Now as we cut, the way we're cutting with the saw and the chisels and the diagrams, it's making that shape and smoothing our finished foot as we go. Cutting it in the freezer really just Maybe it just takes on a whole different dynamic. The ice doesn't crack as well. You don't have to worry about temperature. That's typically where I start a speech about ice sculpting. Is I'm going to bring in a 400, sorry, 300 pound block of ice. I'm going to put it in the freezer. It's probably five degrees or quite a few degrees below zero. It has to be brought up to temperature for you to start sculpting it. Well, it's going to be so brittle, we'll start fracturing your back. It'll look like a piece of marble so all always going to fracture. So you want to temper the block of ice. In the freezer, we keep it around 15 to 20 degrees. We can just start sculpting. Our tools are cold. The atmosphere is cold. We can uh, we have hydraulic lifts now. Just slide the block of ice <coughs> off the floor, and we're working. We're all working all the way. We don't have to bend over it when the jinx all the way. But uh, keeping at that consistent temperature, we don't have to take time to temper it. And as we shape it, it stays that shape. And it's always cutting kind of real smooth. So we're not finding the temperature. This is actually warms up. The block of ice becomes a little harder. It's very brittle. Cuts nice and smooth and easy when it's cold. And I've resisted doing that for many years. There were some guys all around the country that was parked in the freezer for many years. I just didn't think it was the right way to do it. But once we looked into the C and C technology, we realized you have to have that machine in the cold atmosphere to take that block of ice start to shape and sculpt it. If you don't, it gets pretty. It does dump. It's just, ice becomes, you know, it starts to freeze back to itself. So as it's spinning, that drill, it's a big, thick drill bit. It's going through the ice. It starts packing ice and starts trying to get that block up off the face. There's, there's two types of CNC computers guys are using. Some of them are flatbed. They made a block of ice up. So you have to lift that block of ice up. Some might take one block of ice, some are large enough to take three or four blocks of ice at one time. Ours is a style that takes one block of ice upright and just tip it into the block, uh, into the machine, and 
We can even carve like a two block sculpture. And my hands look dirty all the time. You're all chefs, but my hands are dirty. I was fixing the furnace at the office and I'm just a flat silicon. I can't give up. <laughs> so I got embarrassed. I smell like my hands. I can't give up. I'm not in my hands. I'm not in my hands. I'm not in my hands. But anyhow, we can put two blocks together and make one block, let's say, equal. And on the CNC, we can program it in two parts. So if you cut the bottom piece, and I'll slide down to another block of ice and cut the top portion. And then fuse them together and match perfectly. Using the blocks together, I brought a uh, plate and a clothes iron. The shop, we make a really neat table. Actually, we have two of them. We'll take one off the job. Like we'll, we do a big life size ice house down at the PPG Plaza for the dollar energy. And we do a lot of large demos up at Somerset. That's in January. So we have some really neat big sculptures up here. To fuse those blocks together, we use aluminum plates. And this table, we have this iron's on it. I'm not going to just heat now. So we can lay a block of ice on it. And we slide it across this flat aluminum sheet. It's a half inch thick. And then we, once you put that warm, perfectly smooth block of ice on another piece, it's still, you only have one chance to get to just it. So we can form together several blocks of ice. And you almost can't see the seam. I say almost because most of the time we get it right with the dog. But if we're really brushing it around, just miss the window, we don't get that way. You'll start to see a little bit of air bubbles in between. But it really doesn't take much away from the sculpture. We try to do is, if I know I have a seam in a noticeable place, I try to use that seam to the size. Anyone else have any questions? Yes, I know the new thing is the main sculpting concept in Wexford that you did. Yes, the second week of December. Second Friday at the Wexford Plaza Shopping Center. That's the whole thing. I think it's been 25 years that we're doing And uh, we'll make sculptures to put in front of the schools. Actually, we'll do this day. All of you are actually welcome to do it. And many, uh, anyone else in Pittsburgh, parts I we invite all those folks up to have a little ice cream competition. The people that own the, uh, the real estate up there, they have prizes for everyone who shows up. It's really I make a large display that goes off front by the marquee in the parking lot. But it's really for it because an idea we had years ago, they wanted us to do a one big display. We thought it'd be neat to get everybody together. Everyone got some sort of a prize. Actually, because everyone cash, we had to keep it by the And then we make one display, so we kind of divide it up where we make a medium side display out by the, probably just about 14 blocks, of, 16 blocks of ice out front of the parking lot by the main side. And then there's a block of ice in front of most of the stores. You get about 12 to 15 I don't care if you've never sculpted ice before. There's people that's never carved one. It was a great time. They all got something. And it was neat you know, people to see ice getting sculpted right in front of them. And a lot of people never had a very short time to see someone making the ice sculpture. To see it actually happen is really neat for a lot of folks. And Joe, what date is that? Um, what date is that going to be? It's always the second Friday. My grandson is enjoyed sitting in the giant That was very <laughs> <laughs> It was a real honor. I can't believe the face that it put around so many of you guys. Ladies in the room where it jumped to our fences. It's really cool. I really like it. Anyone else have a question? Does anyone ever have a design of small size that never had a chance to talk to you? But so today we can work with that a little bit. I know it gets boring after a while. You know, I take a lot of time carving ice. And for some of them watch a person carving ice, I'm sure it's really boring after a while. You know, especially going through the band. I can remember being up at the restaurant Shelton Road back in the 80s, watching Vincent's eyes carve ice. I wouldn't leave that to the beginning of the end to do two sculptures and things. That was great. I just, couldn't really I just couldn't get enough party. I really wanted to get out and not do it. So it went from one block of ice on the leather top to ice plant and ice plant to an ice car moving out. We're in the Hill District, right off of Bigelow Boulevard, just up from Polish Hill to start up here and out of the right hand side of the ice plant. 
have 15,000 square feet as an old meat factory plant. And we first put down that, I don't think we just used the 1,000 square feet. We had way too much building. It was really an old rundown building. But a place in Oakmont burned down and we had no choice. We lost everything except what struck really in a real jam in 1988. Yes, sir. A block of ice, and I'm going to say this is a deal, it's $45. We got used to be five bucks. How much is a block of ice when you're doing a lot of stuff? Two bucks. Two bucks. <laughs> I sell a 25 pound block of ice for five dollars. Electricity is so crazy. It takes so much ice and so much electricity to make a block of ice. Ice cubes as well. Electricity here in Pittsburgh, it's, I think it takes like 9.8 cents a kg. It's pretty expensive. Water is it's ridiculous. You used to be able to leave the faucet over and hot water down the train. Water goes ridiculous. I looked at it, it's almost as much as you can get out. No, really. But we don't send much water down the train, but we use it all. 44 gallons of water it takes to make a 300 pound block of ice. Up until just Recent years, I would say the last 10 years, most all block was ice was made in a big form, look like a popsicle almost. It was 20 inches wide and about 44 inches tall and 10 and a half inches thick. And it's frozen vertically in a big fat of salt solution. And then ammonia the refrigeration is used to chill that. And that was the way it was from the turn of the century. But there's still a few ice plants around to make it that way. But a company in Colorado invented a machine. Called the Klein Bell. And it makes two blocks of ice at a time that are quartz long. And it's perfectly clear as it freezes. And they run on Freon. And anybody can buy this machine. Now. So if you were sculpting ice in another country or a remote part, you could buy this machine for six or eight thousand bucks. Just like <coughs> make ice and put 40 gallons of water in each chamber. It makes about two blocks at a time. It takes about four days to make a block. The thing that I was Situation man, I built it. I had a coffee pack machine because they all would build a machine that was 40 inches tall by 10 inches by uh, 20 inches thick, like 20 inches wide. So I made a block that's 48 inches by 12 by 10, I'm 20 by 12 by 48, and I'm like 60 inches. And I have another block of ice I made that's 48 inches by 48 inches by 10 inches thick. This block's over 600 pounds. So it's one big, huge rectangle square. And I made those up until about four years ago. And I realized this CNC machine can sculpt from part A to part B, and I can fuse two together. So I don't make those big blocks anymore. It's a lot easier to handle. You know, years ago, we don't need to be able to move a block of ice with ice on it. And if you don't handle ice on a regular basis, it's a little tricky to pick up a block of ice and move it. Um, now we put it in a cardboard box. You can just tip it on a two wheel ball and wheel it anywhere. One person can tip it down against the knee and lay on the ground. It was really about 285 pounds. We call it 300 pounds, that was an interesting standard. It's only about 285 pounds for the price. And it's perfectly clear. And it looks like a piece of glass. It's really clear. Cool. I, I know I'm excited about blocks of ice. I mean, you guys can like pick out this guy. It's really cool to see how things like those of you that have never seen a block of ice. A 300 pound block of ice has got a huge white core in the center. That was the last portion of the ice that was frozen. And we weren't here, we never fought the water. And then guys always worked on trying to get that core out of the center. That, the last part that froze was just all the stuff and the core and anything else. So we have a machine that deionizes the water. We run through a UV lamp last that takes out it. It's so pure, it's like bottled water. But then you still have to agitate the ice and keep it clear. That's the key to making it. It's not a secret, it's not a trick. The key to making clear ice, right, you have to keep it clear. If you took bottled water, deionized water, reverse osmosis water, pour it into a Tupperware container, put it in the freezer, it still has streaks in it. There's always minor. Uh, pieces of something from the air, it's all salt, you can't make a clear block of it. But if you take a little aerator of some sort, a fish tank probably not, you can make that block of ice in your freezer. Perfectly clear. You have to keep the water moving. It freezes from the bottom up and the top of the last fish freezes. Anyone else have any 
<laughs> so what I'm gonna do on here today is I think we'll start with the logo. And that was cut on the CNC. We uh, actually had that so we could go to our files and just send that back to the party room, push a couple of buttons and the shoot starts first. That's really neat watching it. You know, as long as I've had it, I'm looking like I can't believe that it's sitting over here. And believe me, it's not cheap to buy these things. You know, go, the one we have relatively reasonably priced. The average price was $100,000, and ours doesn't cost that kind of money. They're very expensive. Now, we sell a lot of ice, and we sculpt a lot of ice. For us, it was a no brainer. We had to get this. So, how big of an area does the CNC do? I mean, they can move it, right? We couldn't move it without, we haven't set level plumb square. Ours is, what I like about ours is a very small footprint. Ours is 36 inches wide, and it's 50 inches tall, and it's about 24 inches deep. It has slides in there, we put the block of ice in it. They said that one block of ice. Love you, I'm all the blocks of ice. But you can. Yeah. yeah. There's a guy in uh, Huntington Beach, California, has two seasons. There's a flatbed and a bird fish. This day, Paul did the last team of the national. It was a great host. It really was. Probably the one in the show. Let's have a machine do a lot of small team of work. So the machine can make a complete small team. It really can. There's a guy in South Carolina. I don't know what the extent of his ice ability is. But they say he takes everything off the CNC and sends it out to Switzerland. I couldn't do that. It looks like a cookie cutter to me. Yeah. When we make a bird, it looks like a bird. It has wings and the feathers and the, the towers have you just to see all the motion. It's really cool. It looks like it's moving and flying. When we make a person, you can see the features of it. You know, you try to make it out of a cookie. You know, if you want to start sculpting ice, start simple. On the back page, you'll see I have, on one side of this paper, is sculpting things. I'll start from the beginning to end. I'm telling you, it's that simple. I'm not kidding you. On the back, I have a list of really simple stuff. So if you did it, it has to be simple, right? No, if I do it simple, <laughs> I'm not a smart guy, and I, just, I can't believe I can do this. I mean, yeah, I have a lot of things to do with it. You know, I call this girl on the When I, I can show any amount of carbide just like doing arts and crafts. You need to know this, you know, you start from top to bottom, you shape weight. And you know, I can take this block of ice and kind of keep away, it doesn't look like a squat. And that's what's left. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple, right? Yeah, yeah. You ever write a channel before? Uh, obviously, yeah, the, the more time you nice put into it, you start to learn Truly. the craft. We're lucky because we carve ice all the time. So you can always learn something new or discover a different way to do it, easier way to do it. There's more of a, a better technique that looks more realistic. We've made some mistakes. Most of the time, most people don't notice it. But we're not real happy with those out there. You know, psych the kid, you might do something. <laughs> but no one does. They just appreciate it. Look at this is perfect. It's just that's, that's a big thing about my art. It just melts away. I never tried wood. I've never tried wood. Yeah, yeah. So, your thoughts on the ice industry? I know we're doing well up north here, but um, do you feel like it's doing well? Uh, with demand for ice pieces or ice blocks? Or yes. it, it's, it's amazing. Go on the internet, Google ice ball. Think of something you just, a fire truck, a, a person of some sort, uh, some sports figure, uh, an Olympic uh, sport. You'll find the craziest stuff on the internet. It's just you know, interactive sculptures are really big now. We sell a ton of ice balls. We'll make uh, really ornate legs. Then we have another machine that we built that's a it's like a long chainsaw and it slices the blocks. We can slice those blocks down to one inch thick, so it'd be a perfect 20 by 40 by one inch thick slab, and we'll make five inch slabs. The block of ice is 10 inches thick, so we cut it in half, it makes a great bar top. Then we put 
before we cut them, we put them in the CNC. We programmed to cut uh, holders for beer bottles, for instance. They're a top floor design to hold all beer bottles. Then we'll make some really fancy legs, put two, 10, 20 of those together. We can make a nice car, uh, place car tape and we can make for weddings, people put all the things. Now people see this on the internet somewhere else who's done it. They want to have it too. So we've got a machine to do that. But we don't, 100% of our ice doesn't come off the CNC, especially when we're really push. Uh, Dan did all the sculpting. I'll just grab the locks. Friends weren't doing the festivals in summer, so well, and I'll just go old school and just carve the body and say, draw out the ice, pick on the block of ice, because I did all the good. Start cutting with the chainsaw. And I'll use a die grinder for all the nice uh, features and details. The die grinder kind of took place for our uh, chisels. I still really like using chisels, so I've got chisels with me. They're long handled chisels, they just gives you a lot of, uh, what would you say? Yeah. I always use just wood carvings for the tools. Vince told me about J.P. Prince. I don't think they're in the business anymore. Yeah, they're, oh, they're still yeah. around? Yeah. In fact, the ice sculpting tools dropped down all this time. They used to have yeah. three yeah. pages yeah. of ice carving chisels. Yeah. But all these guys aren't interesting. <laughs> you know, I go to flea markets and I see something that's a old ice carving tool, old shaver or something. I buy it. I have a stuff. Old ice tongs. I have hundreds of ice tongs. A lot of people can't use ice tongs. But we also do this lifting the sculpture. You'll see on some, I don't know if we put them on that one, but we always cut handles into the base. I got that idea from Marshall Bailey. Uh, takes a chainsaw and he'll cut four notches in a bar, and two people can grab the sculpture, pick it up, and lay it on the table. Once you cut that sculpture, it may be 150, 160 pounds, and you're not lifting it 280 pounds. So it's really easy to ready to go. All right. It's not that cold out, but like I said, I just want to hang around. What I'll do is, the lighting's not real good out there, so I have the logo out there. First thing I'm going to show you guys is how we back feel. I brought some color sand, so we take the color sand, and we usually put it in just dry. And then, I've got hands always on the internet and find a new way to do stuff. So another guy is adding Idiots. water to the sand. Uh, Man, is that a mess. Okay. When the Penguins last year was uh, going through the playoffs, and Stanley Cup. Good first thing to remember. Each day, he would sculpt 10 pieces of ice. Two of them were for the owners of the opposite team. And the rest were for all the different guys. Back when we were flying. All of them are really neat logos. You know, there was a different logo for everything. Play on the I'm not. I mean, there's like six people in Pittsburgh who are in this sports. Come on. All right. Lucky my brother, my he had the sports teams. You know, he's got a guy who's been in sports. He's been kind of like artistic life. And it's a mechanical electrical. I really know a lot about it. So we build a lot of new things. You know, our block making room is really cool. The way we refill the blocks. We used to use a garden hose. It would take like five or eight minutes to refill uh, the 44, 40 gallons of water into those chambers. Then we got these two big tanks, and I run it through a softener, the deionizer, then the UV light. I stored 600 gallons of water, and they run through two inch lines, and these big fine hoses. And you hook it right on top, open the valve. It takes 60 seconds to fill. It's neat. It's crazy how quick you can make a block of ice. Because now we're making 20 blocks of ice every three days. You know, that might sound like a lot. But years ago, block tanks would be 300, 600 pounds in cans, making that many every three days. The, the need for blocks just disappeared. Years ago, they used to be just refrigeration. The okay. 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 Thanks, Joe. We appreciate you very much. So, if you want to go outside, I'll explain to you about the weather. Yeah. So, this was done on the CNC wheel. It's like this block of ice in the shape, and a flower goes around, and we'll rough cut that. Before the CNC, We'd take sheets of butcher paper, 
make a drawing, then I'd place it against the block of ice, take an ice pick or six prong shaver, and bounce around that image, and it would be left as just a little dotted line all the way around it. And then I'd take the chainsaw, and this is what you'd want to do if you ever had the opportunity to sculpt, because you're not going to have a machine to cut them cut around this to make the lines a little deeper so they don't pile away. And then we'll just start cutting all this outside stuff. Then you have to, the hardest part, well, what I mean by that is, figure right now his hat is 10 inches thick. But you know that hat probably needs to be five or eight inches thick. And when a bird's body is 10 inches thick, but down at the neck, it should only be four and a half inches. And they come up a little bit wider for the face and go back in for the beak. Thinking of three dimensional, I guess, a little difficult. Then changing it up a little more instead of the neck just being curved over, get a little twist in it so that the head goes down and curves over to the side. Once you can start seeing that, and that just takes a little bit of practice. Once you practice, if you have the opportunity to sculpt things, like I said, on that back of those handouts I have, there's some simple things to try. Tell your greeting cards have a lot of really neat simple lines, like you know, Christmas is a great time. Thanksgiving, so if the weather's getting cold, you pick up the block ice and put it out in the yard and do it. So these are long handled chisels. For it's just a flat chisel. It's just, this isn't even my set. But it's really neat, it doesn't take a lot of effort. It just glides through that ice. Ice, like wood has a grain, it's really difficult to cut through, you know, it's hard. This is such a cool medium to work with. It's soft, shapes real nice. There's two sides to the chisel. There's a beveled side and a flat side. The flat side's nice for smoothing things out, but doing a big, long cut. The beveled side's good for getting inside the radius or shaping something, or just taking a little bit off. That's the nice thing about the beveled side. The most basic tool to start with, the six-prong shaver. You probably get those at the restaurant supply place. Watch for the crappy ones that aren't uh, sharp on the end. Just the vets kind of have to tell them to keep it. We have the sharp ones. Yeah, the a really nice sharp six prong shaver. Years ago, here's how we carved ice. We'd have a block of ice and we'd just start shaping it. And a whole block would look like this when we're done. You'd see all these lines cut into the ice. This is what ice used to look like when we started. Now when we start, so we'll the system, first thing we do is cut with a chainsaw. And this is a Makita chainsaw. It's kind of expensive, but it really works great. Another tool that Vince turned me on to. It's a fast, really efficient way to sculpt. When you make a straight cut with a chainsaw, take the saw, you want to stand right in front of your eyes. If you don't, the cut you're going to be sideways, you're going to be going in angles. So when you want to make a straight cut, you want to stay straight in front of it and have the chainsaw. <laughs> I didn't plan that. <laughs> That's fine. Flat chisel, but the feet chisel as well. The feet chisel is great for doing some sort of a texture. So for the broom, I can make the bristles on the broom with a feet chisel. But nowadays, like I said, I would use a die grinder. It doesn't look like this guy is standing here a die grinder. But if any of you are familiar with the Dremel tool, it's like a flat drill, and you put little tips like a router would use on the end and you can really make a lot of neat uh, shapes and textures with them. That's going to be a snowman. If someone wants to try cutting a snowman. Go ahead, call. Vince. I don't want to try. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the offer, though. Well, very kind of you. So offer. come over and check out this logo. Let me explain what's going on here. <clears throat> You want me to fix your software? You don't have to do that. Oh. Once you become a big operator, then you got people do, the do stuff for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
believe me. It was just me for so many years. <laughs> and I always had the tools to fix the chains. <laughs> but anyway. Did the chain break? The chain just popped off. It just popped off, yeah. It sounded like it. So what we did with this, you know, it's the chef type. Yeah. And then stars. And then some stripes. So let's say we'd want to make this red, white, and blue. <laughs> Typically, you got to work with these. Here you can see fusing of ice. So we took one piece of ice and we laminated the logo to the base. Now, this would be warm, we heat this up, and then roll this back and forth across the base. And being that we have an actual table this size, we would take this piece from our work table, slide it right across the iron, and then lift that table up and then it's hydraulics and push the thing. And I'll slide on her as soon as you get in place, man, that thing sticks, it's frozen. It's you great. You temper both sides. Or just one side. It depends. That's a good question. Yeah. It works best if you do one side at a time, but when you're in the freezer, sometimes you do have to do both sides. Yeah. Alright. Because they just freeze up. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see at this angle looking down on you can see the air bubbles, but looking straight across you wouldn't see the air bubbles. Right. Put that together. So that's how they're doing the logo. And you'll notice those guys. A lot of people, a lot of people wonder how in the world they do that. And they'll be like, oh, it's proprietary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so, no, there's nothing proprietary about this. You can make a steak like so many ways. It's like sculptures the same way. I'm going to slide this to the end. Hopefully, I'll have a problem. So people say, do you ever break a block of ice? You're getting right set it up in the middle of carving. That almost never happens. Yeah. Once in a while, I can remember taking it. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> it does happen. It does happen a lot. But it almost really never happens, though. <laughs> but if it does break, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 If it does break, basically you can put most pieces back together. They do go back together pretty easily. If you don't have. But there's a, a neat stuff they sell, like sanitation places, it's called bubble gum reserve. And it's like a liquid free gun, I'm sure it's environmentally safe. And you <laughs> spray it on here and it freezes it back together. Yeah. Now I've carried them. What are the stress fractures? What is that noise? You hear the popping and That's, I've carried a big temporary. hippo, like a six hundred pound hippo. And yeah. it was it was, well, it was painful. Yeah. Well a couple of things are but happening. Those those you're those getting there's two tracks you can't be concerned about, right? They're not no. gonna split. Because it warms up, but all those actually almost disappear. Yeah. You know, if you brought a block of ice out, let's say we take this sculpture out of the freezer and you want to put it on <coughs> a buffet table. As soon as you bring it out of a minus ten freezer and you bring it in an eighty degree room, it's gonna start fracturing. Yep. You do want to even temper your sculpture. Put it in the refrigerator for a while. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 If you're fortunate enough to walk in yeah. the fridge, let it sit and then I'll tell you what, cover it up. Throw a tablecloth over or something. You know, an apron, mm -hmm. so it doesn't warm up too quick. But you get thermal shock, and then when you bump things, that's a physical shock. That's a little different. Well, you think an hour or so? Yeah. You know how you? I'll tell you the way to tell. You bring the sculpture out; it's going to be clear from the freezer. You put it in a warm area; it's going to turn all white and frosty. Yeah. As soon as it starts to re-clear, now you're done. Bring it out just before it's completely clear. By the time you get up on a table, it's good. And it lasts a lot longer, too, because it's well frozen. In our years, our freezers just weren't quite warm and are cold enough. And we'd get the sculpture there, and they're really dripping already. <laughs> so no, no, we don't do that. So this this table, uh, this portion of the flag is probably, what, blue, right? And the stripes are red, right? Mm -hmm. Looks good to me. So you so, have to do that manually? You have to add yeah. that sand manually? Yeah, we don't try to it. That's not mixed with water. CNC doesn't transfer. This one's dry. <laughs> I just grabbed them off the shelf. Yeah, it does. You know, I did some people. You know, that's kind of a secret. I'm like, oh, we go bragging to people. Well, we cut everything on a machine. No, I don't tell you. <laughs> that's an industry secret for us industry people. <laughs> so well, you just put a little like, layer of that in there, and then yes. you pack snow on top. Believe me, when you do like the Penguins logo and the, some of these other teams, there's so many colors. And then you're putting in this little black line, a little yellow line there. Man, trying to keep that crap from <laughs> mixing over next to each other. It's really a challenge.
So do, how do you get colored sand? Is there any you can buy? Yeah, like the hobby place. Yeah. 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 Pat yeah. Kutan, yeah. and Michael. They have like a kid's craft or something. So you can buy colored sand? Yes. Oh. Tempered and tempered. So here, See? someone try red. Put some, I think it's, put some in there. Yeah. So I was going to ask if you could get a Home Depot and buy sand for the table. Well, we've had, we've and done that, you know. Yeah. There are times you'll need. Like if you had a nautical or a beach attack. Yeah. Yeah. So think about putting this. Now what's going to keep that from falling Do you back? You flood it. You put snow in there. Mm -hmm. You got to back fill with snow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Snow. So <laughs> we have to wait for it to snow. We have to wait. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a tight window. <laughs> it doesn't snow anymore. So we have a box of snow. Yeah, it's a magic. <laughs> it's a magic well, that's nice cool. plant from the North Pole. <laughs> we, we make snow right there, killed it. We Santa got Claus it. Great. <laughs> They secured that for you, so <laughs> it's not going to come out. It's just snow. I'll guide you so quick. dollars worth of tape on there. I was just bragging about how fish I was. So if you ever wanted a box of snow, it looks like. It's like this. It's actually in the back. <laughs> and this is dry ice. Dry ice is just solid CO2 gas. Carbon dioxide. Dry ice is. It's 109 below zero to keep things frozen really well. You guys make out on your No, no one makes uh, dry ice. That's a, that's a byproduct of the natural gas industry. So the natural gas industry, they're the ones that make CO2, or yeah, the CO2. So if you had a CO2 fire extinguisher and you sprayed it into a cardboard box or a plastic bag, you'd have a blob of dry ice. You don't see too many. So who do you buy it from? We buy it from Kelly Jones. Yeah, they make dry ice. Nobody makes them. It comes from Toledo, Texas. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Everybody. It's shipped all over. Yes, it's shipped all over. Huh. So there's only one place in the whole world that makes it. No, there's probably a dozen places in the United States. <laughs> there's probably like 12 places <laughs> in, around the maker. So now. Let's say I wanted to have, yeah, wait. Now you'll, you'll backfill this. And now, the real magic to this is when you look at it from the other side. So, so what's snow now? No, snow is just snow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who makes that? Ice crystal. Who makes that? Yeah. God Who makes, makes that. that? <laughs> so how do you guys make snow? No, so, when the, the CNC, when the CNC when his, cuts the image, snow gets, blows uh, out of that thing. Oh, wow. So we scoop that snow up, and it's really soft and fluffy. Like this is a little bit starting to get damp. So it's really dry, and it packs in really good. Uh, we have so many different colors of sand. And then my guy, Dan, he gets crazy. He starts mixing colors. Uh, he tried to, then he'll, he'll start putting glitter in with it. No, <laughs> no, no. Oh, he's so into it. I'm the least enthusiastic when I work with all this My guy, Dan, really. That boy was a fine, he's a great guy. Where did Dan come from? He's a chef. He's a chef, okay. Last he was working with to say, how long has he been with you? Dan's been carving for me 22 years. 22. Full time for six, six years. years. <laughs> six years ago, I said, you know what? I can't keep doing this by myself. Yeah. And every Christmas time, when I say Christmas, that means from Thanksgiving till New Year's. That's my busy time. I would have a handful of chefs would come over and help me. Now, we used to have an ice carving class we provide. And it was a neat class. It was uh, six weeks, one day a week, and uh, we'd sculpt something different. And I sculpted everything that was five inches thick like this. So we'd take a full block of ice like that, 20 by 40 by 10, and we'd split them in half and have a little base on them. And that's what we'd work with. Chef Keith Butler was. <laughs> 1989, I told you. 1989. <laughs> it's like, no, there's, that water shouldn't be in there. If I was in the freezer, you, I don't, you probably don't see that sand. But what that would do is it, it would leave a bunch of wacky bubbles on the other side. Uh, I was going to say, won't they, the sand freeze if you let it sit there long enough? No. Nah, nah. nah. 
No, because sand, I don't know what the proper term for it is, but what it does is it absorbs heat at a much faster rate than ice does. So it's always taking on heat. Let's say we take this sculpture and we put this on a buffet table and it go, we make a lot of neat food trays. They're like multi-layer and you can put seafood and sushi and all kinds of things. So we do a lot of interactive sculptures. The big thing too is drink luge. We can make a drink luge of any type of sculpture. That's where you pour a shot in and it shoots out of the bottom of the sculpture. And, you know, like college kids put their mouth on it. Wait more, Al, you're having the country <laughs> club talk. You have to put your glass in. So what was that in the picture? You're carving it out and then piece the two back together? That one is. In the picture, it looks like a colon, but that's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> right. So you carve that channel. And we also make a shrimp lose, which is cool. So we copied that idea. I wasn't on it. But it's like a Y-shaped channel. We cut the CNC does that now. I used to do it by hand. But when I did that by hand, I realized we're getting oil from our chainsaw on the ice. Uh, now we're using all these sculptures for food and we try to clean it up. And I believe me, I use food grade oil. But you can't get it all out. Yeah. But the CNC doesn't have oil. It just cuts it nice and clean and dry. So it's really great for the problem. So when you put the snow on the sand, you have to put it in there fairly gently because it will displace the sand. It will, but you know, our guy Dan is using this sand, which is just play sand, and then he'll put, let's say he'll put about an inch of that, and then he'll put water in it, and it starts. We first, we were just a mess. It wasn't working properly. Fine. I don't know what he did, because I don't use this method. I don't like using the, um, the wet sand. I used to use the old sand, just like I'm doing it. But yeah, it's like Vince said, you have to put it real slow. Otherwise, like if you do a multiple color thing, you've got colors mixing and blowing all over the place. It's frustrating. Like you do the, I said, Penguin, but they bought so much. Some of the, like the stars were glittered and silver, and then you had black and silver. And then whoever the opposing team was, there's some really neat logos on So typically, this sand, this is moist now, but we use a dry sand. It won't, I mean, it's not. So it just, it's nice and soft, and it just falls right into the groove. Because we're doing the freezer, the temperature's always consistent. And electricity's not cheap, that's why sculptures don't drop in place. And you're asking me, it's cheap, it's not yeah. cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this, this will work fine for what we're doing today, but this isn't what you want the ice. It should be coming off granularly and then drops right in to the uh, cap. Now this looks like nothing. You think, oh, this looks like crap. So once I turn it over, that's what the sculpture is. <coughs> so yeah, I could be dragging some sand out by trying to uh, pack this in. Like this. Now, how'd you get started in ice? You said you had an artistic background, yeah. but I mean, yeah, so how did you choose this medium? Okay, I choose this medium. And I'm, I'm not pool crap okay. because of Vincent's law. <laughs> really? 1984, he was making this pyramid ice sculpture in his living. What came to you guys in that? And he he, came was, blocks of he ice. was getting blocks of ice from a guy in Kansas who made a real nice block of ice. And it was the last block plant we had in the area. Yeah. And I guess he was looking for so many things. So we brought him over. And, uh, when I seen this guy carving, I said, yeah. So then Vince would say, oh, you want to come up to the uh, restaurant show Monroeville? And I said, this is in the early mid-80s. And Vince was always up for doing like demos. And I'd sit there and watch everything he did. And then back then we didn't have the internet. So like, you had to really... <laughs> you guys, you guys <laughs> you really had to yeah. talk. <laughs> we didn't have mobile phones. We had, we had these things yeah. called books. So I like, <laughs> I've never heard of that. That's, that's unique. Yeah. Never seen that. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, they even came from no, places went, called libraries, too. I was walking blocks of ice, and I came with these guys because they had a nice plant, or a nice ice plant in Oakland. Yeah. And I said, you guys get blocks of ice. What are you doing with blocks of ice? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I said, why don't you come and see what I do with a block of ice, you know? So they came. I was, there was a, in, somebody hired me in East Liberty. They yeah. were opening the Pyramid Restaurant. Oh, wow. The Pyramid <laughs> Ice Sculpture. 
Remember that? Yeah. The and, pyramid was uh, more like a disco or nightclub so or something. Yeah, upstairs. The alley yeah. back behind the restaurant. So we went out there and they were like, we have to see what you're doing with these blocks of ice. So I said, you should come and watch. That's amazing. So, yeah, the rest is history. That's right. I wouldn't do it this way, but being that we're not in a freezer, and this is not the ideal condition, I just want to get some of this snow off. So when we pick this up, and we still do use a torch. So we'll have like a roofer's torch. That's like 500,000 BTUs. So if the piece is really white and, and all frosted up when you're done, because we're spraying water on and stuff and trying to get a lot done, we'll just hit a little bit of that torch. Man, it looks like a piece of glass. It just eliminates all the crystals. So Joe, where have you car Joe's carved ice all over the world, right? I did, but you know what? I haven't gone anywhere in 20 years. Where have you carved ice, Joe? I've been, to, I've been to Canada, I've been to Ireland, but that's not my thing anymore. I even like yeah. traveling. It's so cool we just carve ice here. I've been to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm just some guy out there. Here, I'm a, I'm a big deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, that was just a goofy guy. That's one of the definitions of an expert, you know? Like, <laughs> right? A briefcase 50 miles from home. <laughs> <laughs> Who cuts your aluminum? Um, a st a steel placing that I made. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a pretty great piece. It's really thick stuff we made here. It's a lot of these heat elements at Granger's. And then the size of this table is half inch. One piece is three quarters of an inch. And on the, it has a backstop on one side. So I bolted these heat elements underneath it. We plug it in. And we do the ice house down at Market Square for Dollar Energy Fund. It's 50 by 20. It had a garage, a bathroom. It had a kitchen and a living room in it. Yeah. And, uh, so to get those pieces to stick and to have them plumb level and square, you know, you only have a short amount of time to heat that, and then we had to flip them up. So then we made the backstop. So we hit two surfaces at once, fuse it together, and that's usually right after New Year's. That might be the end of February. I mean, the end of January first. Day. I don't know if it's going to turn out 100% clear. Especially because it's really thick this car. Oh, thanks, no. Jeffrey. <laughs> so on this piece, you can see my guy Dan made this base. And what he did was he cut these notches in the bottom. Because this is a narrow piece. If this was a piece like the snowman or something where it's just thick, we'd have these notches cut right on the front. And you'd be able to stick your hand all the way into that base to lift it up. Like I said, that was thanks to Marshall Bailey. That was his idea. He used to come up the ice plant and carve ice for his own little side jobs. So basically all I did here was the sand and the snow. Hopefully it looks kind of clear. So it's kind of wow. Oh look at that. Look at that. <laughs> so once this is done in the freezer, we wouldn't have any streaks. This is the snow. I'm just not gonna be able to get off it. Just, I wanted you guys to see how this is done. Because you'll see this technique used a lot. And, and it seems like it's such a mystery. Oh, I must be right. It's not, it's not hard at all. So believe me, I can do it. It's not hard. It's all, <laughs> <laughs> all in a technique. All in a technique. Technique in this thing called the internet. See someone else did. I could do that. Yeah, I mean, that's a big development. You used to have to do all that stuff by hand. So that's... Cut so, all this out. So that's thanks for saying. Cool, yeah. So believe me, I wasn't always this lazy. I used to have to take a router or a die grinder, and you're hunched over like this, and we would, some guys, or women, they would take a template and then spray water on that and spread that template out and cut through that paper and painstakingly cut out each individual star. And, all. and you could still, that's, believe me, the router pooped out once this summer. I was in a panic. First thing I did is I ran up to um, Pat Catan's and I bought an overhead opaque projector and I made templates, which I haven't done in five or six years, and then got the die grinding and router on. We had to do this all by hand until the parts came in for them. Now I bought every part for that stinking router. So I have <laughs> this fancy aluminum beam. Yeah, it makes the piece goes. This router head goes back and forth, in and out. 
and you can barely see it moving. It's really fast, but it actually makes perfect circles, like this little design here in the tote. Yeah, how long did it take for that to cut this design? Uh, this was fast. I'm not kidding. This was 10 minutes. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's it. But minutes. there's pieces I'm surprised. My brother and Dan, the ice carver, who works for me, they know the computer thing. I, I don't believe it. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't do the program. I'm going to say, oh yeah, I do all the programs. No, I don't. I could go and start the machine and run and bring the programs up and, and then run them off on the thing. But the actual programming, I don't do. But we use Corel Draw, which I'm comfortable with. But then the other thing is you have to go in and through another software, Millwright, tell the router what size, because we changed the tip. So let's say these larger cuts down here, they were done with a big half inch tip. And it looks like a big flat drill bit. It doesn't go to a point, it's flat on the end. So that router would go in and cut this out. And it has to, certain sizes, they know, can only go a certain speed. So you have to set how many thousands of inch that it's moved. And it's fast, it's not the, the program. It's, it's like Windows based stuff, you know. It's, it's not like we have to do a lot of mathematics. I could do it too, I just need two days to read a book. <laughs> like when I buy something, I build it first and I see, oh wait, that looks like Bronco. <laughs> then I get the book out. And then I, at first I look at the picture on the front of the box. I say, oh, that's why, because over there. And then if I don't work, then I, look, then I read directions. But you have to, it's, I'm just goofing around to tell you, it, it's pretty simple to do. So it's like we're an overnight success, but it took us 35 years to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so the half inch drill bit will go in and cut this first and it just cuts that shape but you know this started out with the mill's looking at the full block of ice standing vertical in the machine and then it goes in and does all this cutting and this is sideways and then we'll switch the tip we have from eighth inch tips and all sizes in between and then when a tip, it looks like there's a flat drill bit. And then does it goes it, in and does that's it. how you would you tip to get next? Yes. It'll, it's neat. It'll start running, it'll stop, and it'll say tip change. And it'll say tip B, and then, you, no, that's uh, three, three eighths. Hmm. The wonders of modern technology. Yeah. <laughs> so great. if I was just doing this in snow, yeah. which, you know, a lot of designs are just a snow field, but we don't have to have color. And basically that's what it would look like if we all snowed it. And some we do display from the front like this. I always like displaying it so it looks like it's really in the ice. I meant to say one other thing. If I was going to use this for food, you almost have to have the food in a separate trough in the front, which we do cut for some jobs. We, we make a lot of food trays, and then there's like a little platform. With, because if it's up for a couple hours, this sand's going to start running out of it. So then the other thing was, since we developed that, um, and, and I, we didn't invent it, I copied this. I seen someone else that I could do that. So this big chainsaw blade on these bars, it cuts, I can make a thin sheet of ice, and then we laminate to that to the back. Now that keeps that cold, it yeah. doesn't melt out, and you don't have the sand falling down in the If it's seafood, it's all right. But you know what? That's that. not easy <laughs> to do. <laughs> That's a good one. Like that. <laughs> but to laminate another piece, to this block of ice. You, that takes a little bit of practice and skill. Sure. Otherwise you get a lot of bubbles in there. Or well, the other thing it does, you have to have these at two different temperatures because you don't want to heat this up. This stuff will all start to fade out. Yep. So this piece is cold, you gotta burn it for So that's the same as putting a luge together or something exactly. like that, right? Just like, yes. Has anyone seen the drink luges that, that are yeah. really popular nowadays? I mean, they're from obscene things, which I never do, honestly. I don't do, you know, people, women or no, I don't do, honestly, I don't do that. I said, my competitor will do that. I, I, we got too much class. <laughs> no, we just don't do them. <laughs> we just don't. Have you but, been asked to do them? Yeah, every time. Yeah. 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 Good. I try to sell them something else. I said, you know, that's cool, but someone's going to be offended. How about or... a flower? <laughs> <laughs> but they're. How about an eagle? Yeah, an eagle. <laughs> A basket. Yeah. You spoke about competition. You know, how do your competitors hold up to your quality and your uh, efficiency? There's a lot of great ice carvers out there. Yeah. Really good. In the ice Pittsburgh area. Out there. In the Pittsburgh area, we got good ice carvers. Yeah. Most all of them, at one point or another, came through our ice plant buying tools or class. But 
being really good is one thing. Being great, you know, that's a lot of guys are great. They learn that on their own. Yeah. You know, because they're putting the time in to learn how to do it. There's, nobody, there's nobody in the no, Pittsburgh market like <laughs> There's a guy, a chef, Rich Boob, and he does a lot. He calls himself. Uh, oh, let's see how I get his best on the name. And then there's a guy from here. He's a guy from Cleveland. He brings sculptures in Pittsburgh all the time. You know, if you need something really good, and you want, you know, the people's gonna be there on time. We're, we're big on being prompt. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, we're not showing up when the people are coming in the back door. Guests are coming in front. We don't do that. Never. Then there's another technique was where we might want this blue and the stars are white in there because right now that would actually end up clear when you look through the sculpture when it's done. You wouldn't. See. Then we have to do what's called we carve it, an island. And then what that does makes another little pocket inside the star. And then we fill that with snow or white sand. Sometimes you want to put snow there. Or if you just backfill the whole thing, you wouldn't, like, no, this whole pocket's filled with snow. You don't see any of that snow. But then if we pocket that, then you'd see the star would be white. So that's snow filled, that's sand filled. Some people use gelatin, food grade gelatin, and they mix uh, food coloring in it. Or they'll use craft paint, like kids play paint on water-based paints. They'll use that also mixed with the gelatin. But it's another level of time. It's, it's, for us, it takes too long. You just gotta heat the water, you know, and just make like gelatin, and then bring it to a certain temperature, and then pour it into that socket there, that pocket might warm up and fill with water kind of brings a, a cloudy, bubbly look to the, to the finish. So I really wanted to show you guys this technique because it's so popular nowadays because a lot of people around the country are buying these CNC machines. But for years, we did them by hand. And you still can. And believe it, we still do if our machine doesn't work properly. Joe, so where did you get that table? That's about the sturdiest plastic table I've ever seen. You roll, roll that thing around and the legs will fall off. <laughs> That's a Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, lifetime. and it has a little handle on the side. Okay, you want to take your shell and roll. So do you need, you need help moving that, that block off the table? No, you guys can keep this. I mean, okay. Chef Butt wants to take this. Does anyone have any questions about it? So let me just run through a couple quick things. I'm just going to tell you, if we were going to sculpt this site, if we brought it to you, it'd be tempered and ready to carve. If you're taking it out of your freezer and you wanted to make the sculpture, let's say you never carved before, that's great. Just practice. You could, first thing you want to do is make a template. Make it 20 inches by 40 inches. Draw it out. Start with something simple that's easy to, to do that we don't get discouraged doing or get frustrated doing. And do something that doesn't have a lot of depth to it or different shapes to it. So I have some of the simpler things that you can try. And like I said, the more you practice and the more you feel that you're comfortable with making three-dimensional stuff, you'll have more of a shape where it looks like, like, you know, when we make a bird, it looks like that thing's ready to fly or it's swooping in to land on something. So Joe, for your classes, do you do them in the freezer? I don't do classes anymore. Oh, you don't do classes? No, I could. Uh, even if it was a special request. If they had a million bucks, maybe. <laughs> a million bucks? How about a hundred thousand? I'd do for free for you. For you, Ben's free. Yeah. Thanks. No. I, I just don't have the time anymore. Yeah, for Yeah, before it wasn't like curiosity question. Like, yes, sir. Do you rely on the water to leave the chainsaw? No, Jeff. No, believe no. it or not, the tip of this chainsaw is really hot. Yep, there's oil in there. Yeah. This didn't break, it was just loose. Yeah. When, it'll, it'll burn through oil too. So, one other technique. I wonder if my normal thing is on. Yeah. Use that. Yeah. Blows through a lot of oil. When we're in the freezer, everything's cold, that snow would fall right out of there. So, once we pack the snow into the logo, and we're in, being we're in the freezer, then we take it. And we actually have to wet the back of it. So, then it's in the freezer, yeah, so it's freezing sense. solid. Otherwise, if you cut that in a freezer and it stand up, everything's just going to fall right out. Yeah. So you, you yeah. to, actually, first we put the, before like my guy Dan does it wet, I do it dry. So I'll put it in dry, then I'll set this to be a mist and, and I'll wet the sand. And then it gets like a little crust on it. Then you can sprinkle that snow and it doesn't blow everything. Yeah, right. That was a trick I wasn't going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, I won't be trying this soon. Don't tell them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these things can be done with a die grinder or router by hand. You know, hand router. A lot of routers aren't good because they have a base that you can't see around Milwaukee. And a couple of people make some with a plexiglass base and you can see underneath them. So a lot of times you can't see that tip when you do a router. But a die grinder is great. You just hold it and go around it. But it's a little bit of fatigue. Cutting, cutting. <laughs> and it's best to be up on a table. Yeah. But that's just a simple one to show you some color in it, and that's how it's done. That's how people are doing it. So, real quick, I will start with the side check. Make a template, place it against the ice, pounce the image on it. If you're cutting it outside and it's really cold, spray a little bit of water on the paper in a couple of spots, and the paper will stick to it. So, then punch the image through on a piece of paper that you have your drawing on. Definitely. And as you peel that away, take your chainsaw, rough cut a little deeper, like the router did for us, and then just start cutting away the, all the outside. You always want to start from the top to the bottom, obviously not the bottom, because if you cut away the bottom, it's going to probably crack and fall over. Always, we always leave at least five inches for a base. Being, you know, the traditional blocks of ice, like us old guys started with, they were tall. So you had a lot of ice to work with, there's a nice base left over. With these new style blocks, of most of the ice sculptors all use this climb belt block, it's called. And, uh, it's a short block relative to it. But then a lot of designs just got shrunk down a little bit, a little bit small. You know, we, start, we used to think in proportions this big, it was a lot easier to carve. Now, my guy Dan wanted to cut a five inch slab with four different little, different size snowmen for me to cut out for you guys. Oh, I'm too lazy to do that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> we can do that now with our CNC router, and they're really neat for. Uh, centerpieces so we could sculpt for any type of event some sort of a centerpiece you know like little uh, we also have this neat thing it's a, a lathe so we could take the block of ice not rectangular like this but our machine will slice above a 10 by 10 piece where I could freeze two blocks together and it would be 20 by 20 by 40 and I cut the corners off and the lathe has a, a gear drive on the end it'll spin that block of ice and across the top I have a router that moves from left to right. And I made these plastic templates out of food grade plastic. It's heavy, like HDP plastic. And uh, it's like cutting board material. So it's half of, let's say, the Stanley Cup. I'd make that a lot. So as it's turning and the router's going from one end to the other, it's the, the mill bit on the router is following this template. It's going up and down with this roller, and it's going across it. And it's this big block of ice is spinning. When you're done, it's probably 320 pounds because it just we started out with 600 pounds ice. You know, the real Stanley Cup is 35 pounds, but it looks exactly like the Stanley Cup. It'll shape it and have all the exact dimensions. We can make all kinds of bases and little columns. It's really neat. So that's with our route, uh, our lathe. So that's also something. And I copied that idea. I didn't figure that out. It was just, I see how they did it. But you could buy this. Great, Joe. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming. Okay. 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 Okay.